Hi everyone and welcome back. This time I've been asked to make a stub axle for another microcar. A copy of one that you see here, except there are a few changes required. One, both threads need to be extended a little. Two, a radius fillet is required at the intersections. And three, a replacement castellated nut is required at each end. That is to replace the existing brass nut. Apart from finding out what material is required, I needed to find out the existing dimensions and find the offset between the two stub axle components. This stub axle is offset because these microcars are chain driven and in order to adjust the chain the stub shaft was offset and the chain is adjusted by rotating the stub shaft to achieve the desired tension on the drive chain. To find the offset I used a V-block on my surface plate, then using the DTI to confirm the maximum rotational height I was then able to find the offset between both spindles using slip or, or gauge blocks. Here of course is my working out sheet. Because I'm going to machine the material between centres that means after facing off putting two centre holes in each end. One pair in the centre and one pair offset by 7.34mm. The pair of centre holes are just straightforward plunge cuts using the tailstock. But to set and make the two offset holes a little bit of work is needed first. Using V-blocks and a scribe vernier I established the centre of the material. Then I made a scribe mark through. Rotating the scribe mark through 90 degrees I then marked off the 7.34mm offset into each end. After marking the crosshairs with a sharp punch I used the pedestal drill to make the offset centre hole, as you can see here. My plan was to use the parting off tool to establish the roughing limits of the offset part of the stub shaft. It was also while doing the intermittent cutting I established that I had a much bigger problem with my tailstock than just a poorly fitting quill. The intermittent cut also showed that the tailstock main body was also rocking on the base plate even though it was clamped down pretty firmly. Now it's time to find out how bad the tailstock really is. I'm pre-roughing all the excess material off before I complete the roughing out operation the following day. It should allow time for the material to settle overnight. You can see here there's a lot of material to remove. Having removed most of the material here with the left hand facing tool, I've switched to a right hand facing tool to clean up around the previously cut slot. To put a 5mm rad fillet between the two parts of the stub shaft, I used a 10mm button tool. With the, it had got a very positive rake angle. Um, I did this as a test cut to see if the machine could handle it. It did cope with it, but to be honest I did have a couple of jam ups during this test. Um, only to find that it was the fault of the drive belt, it was a bit too slack. So after resetting the drive belt it was all go. The following day I started to complete the roughing out process on the one inch dimension. Using a tungsten carbide tip tool I didn't remove more than say half a mil at a time due to the material not being very free cutting. I used a mixture of old engine oil paraffin with a touch of Jay's fluid to, to lube the cutter. I used it because I've got a fair bit and therefore cheaper than buying a few litres of the proper stuff. Despite that it worked surprisingly well.
After turning the material round, it was time to complete the 5mm radius between the two spindle dimensions. Here I'm turning the shoulder dimension over what will be, eventually, the 3 quarter inch spindle. I'm doing this to gauge the 5mm radius point. I must admit, uh, after the two jam ups I had the other day, I was a bit on tender hooks at this stage. I finished the 5mm radius at this slow speed for two reasons. One, I had a jam up the other day, and two, the material was vibrating, it was affecting the finish. This is where I'm machining the wheel hub relief. It's 13.5mm from the now redundant seal dimension. This is the first of the two important dimensions I've got to do. This one being the 3 quarter inch bearing push fit dimension. It took quite some time to set it up and being EN24 spec it doesn't like being machined very much. So getting the material to cut parallel was difficult to say the least. Still having machined everything between centres I can at least be assured that once I've set it it'll remain set. Having turned the material round, it's time to get the second important dimension completed. This is the one inch adjuster dimension. It enables the stub axle to be unclamped and rotated to adjust the uh, chain drive tension. The reason I'm not running the lathe any faster than about 300 rpm is because the material is out of balance. At 400 rpm, despite having the lathe mounted on, a, on the floor via a 2 inch thick base, it still gets all excited. So, despite having a counterweight on the faceplate, I can't go any faster. This is where I'm cutting a 7 8 UNF by 14 TPI thread. That's a mouthful. Um, and because my lathe is a generic Chinese lathe with all its inherent problems I choose to thread using the hand crank and not via the power source. Needless to say the thread did turn out okay but my arm will recover. You'll notice at this point that the thread has suddenly and mysteriously lengthened. Uh, that's because I made an error in the material length that I required. Uh, that is that I forgot to allow for the offset countersunk cone. Um, this ended up with me having to make a Mark II. If I'd left the Mark I as it was, there would have been a rather ugly 5-8 square peg at the end. I did say this material didn't really like being cut. This is the parting off cut as you can see, uh, just to get rid of any of the excess uh, holes and bits and bobs. Um, I didn't cut all the way through with the uh, parting off tool because that would be obviously dangerous and I wouldn't be able to put this chamfered leading edge on. I cut that little noggin off and filed the end flat and reset it all in the uh, in the milling machine between two V-blocks. Uh, I haven't really got much choice by way of how I was going to hold the job uh, because half of the job is offset to the other half of the job. So th there's the problem. Um, so I was left with only this um, setup. Well, it's the only setup I could think of at the time anyway. I plunged down um, three mil um, or thereabouts, in the hopes of uh, producing a 5 eighths um, across the flat square peg. Um, needless to say it was successful, um, but uh, my problem was that I had to get a square peg and the only choice I got was really to uh, face off on the top uh, when finished, rotate it through 90 degrees against a set square, uh, clamp it up and do the same operation again another three times and uh, they hopefully end up with a nice square pack. It wasn't too bad.
The square peg at the end actually came in useful because I used it to keep the um, hole in line whilst I was drilling for the uh, split pin. Um, all I had to do was drill part way through, turn it round and start uh, drilling from the other side and it, it just lined straight up. Uh, this bit was easy peasy. The Mark II gave me a better chance of getting the smaller end thread completed uh, a little easier. Um, the half inch BSF by 16 TPI was going to be done by using a die holder for this task. But I elected to swap the uh, change gears and give the hand crank another outing. And after threading I partly trepanned the last bit off and then used the hacksaw to finish off before uh, grinding the end. Uh, this bit's done. Right, I've now got to make two castellated nuts, one for each end. Uh, I've sped the uh, uh, movie up uh, a little just so as not to bore you too much, uh, certainly for this final little bit. Um, it was basically quite a simple process other than the fact that uh, the larger of the two drills I used was a little blunt so I had to take it off, sharpen it and then use it. It worked much better after that. Parting the nut off, I used two parting off tools. One was a, a, a tip tool that took the brunt of most of the intermittent cutting and then I used a high speed steel blade afterwards to complete the cut. As you can see here I basically use the uh, vice jaws and the hex itself to index the, uh, the cuts for the castellations. Simple process. Once again, I hope you enjoyed the video. As always, any comments are welcome. Please subscribe and click the thumbs up button. Bye for now.